Wedging. What is wedging and why do it? When you open a bag of clay from a manufacturer, what you'll have is a dense, de-aired block of clay. They've actually run this clay through a machine called a pug mill, which turns up the clay and sucks the air out of it with a vacuum. So what you have is this very dense, solid block. And that's great. You want the most consistent starting material for any of your ceramic processes, whether you're throwing or making slabs, pinch pots, or coil pieces. Now, you'll also have some used clay that maybe you've cut off the block and used for some project, but it didn't dry out and you put it back in the bag. But now it's no longer one solid block. It's got some sort of folding or air pockets maybe from, from whatever you used it for. So we need to figure out a way to get this back into one consistent piece so that we can use it for the next project without worrying about all of those weaknesses that, that could appear. And that's where wedging comes in. So you can take something inconsistent like this piece and wedging is the process of working this clay down against the surface in a specific series of movements designed to force the air out of the clay and make this piece into one consistent block. So I'm doing the seashell method of wedging right now, which is uh, emphasizing one hand, in this case my left hand, is doing most of the pressure and I'm forcing this clay down at a 45 degree angle against the wearboard. And you can see that that's starting to layer up these different wrinkles of the clay. And you can see it's called the seashell method because it looks a little bit like a conch shell. And as I do this, you can see that any of these folds here are being squeezed together sequentially. So hopefully any air that's trapped between those layers is being squeezed out rather than being encased or trapped inside the interior of the clay. So even though it looks like kneading dough for baking bread, it's actually a little bit different because we're here just trying to force the air out of the clay. So this is actually quite a complicated motion that took me a long time to feel comfortable with. I got the basic principles of it but I just didn't have the muscle memory built in yet to really do it efficiently. So don't be surprised if you do this the first time and it doesn't feel right and maybe it ends up worse than when you started. Just be patient with yourself and keep trying. So to slow down the series of motions and explain them, what I do is I take the lump of clay and I choose whichever hand is your dominant hand, in this case my left hand. And I'm going to hold that clay firmly in the palm there, and my weaker hand just rests on the top. It's more of a guide. So my left hand, I'm going to use the heel of the hand to push down at a 45 degree angle to the wearboard. That's going to force this little heel of clay to come out. Then I'm going to roll it back, rocking it back on the surface of the clay, not lifting it up off the table, just rocking it back. And as I do that, I'm repositioning my hand and I'm also going to give it a slight twist, maybe five degrees at the most. And then I'm going to do that again. And as I keep rocking back and twisting five degrees, pushing down 45 degrees, and I reposition my hand each time, what that eventually adds up to is a spiral. And I will just keep working this all the way around and I'll probably wedge, I'd say 50 to 100 strokes before I feel like this ball of clay is really consistent. So some common issues you might run into is say you're doing the seashell method and one thing that can happen is the ball gets really small and you get the heel of the clay bigger and bigger. Well, that's happening because I'm not rolling it back far enough and repositioning my hand enough to bring that clay up around again. So if you're getting the ball too small, try rolling it back farther and repositioning your hand farther down the surface of it before you push down again. Okay, the other thing is 
Maybe the ball gets too big and the heel of the clay starts to get too small. Or even worst case, you start to fold it over. Now we really don't want to do that because that's an option for air to get trapped inside. And so the way to avoid that is to just not roll it back as far. You know, roll it back a little bit less before you push down again. And again, your weak hand is just here to, as a guide to help with the rotation. You're really not pushing down. So another thing that I'll see some people do is have, have these deep heel marks from your, your weaker hand, which really shouldn't be that involved. And, and the problem with that is that that can also uh, trap some air in those creases. So if you get the hang of it, you can practice just one-handed, although that's quite a challenge even for me. But the main goal is, again, just consistency in your block of clay. Now, at the end, you have this crease, but you, you do want a solid block. So how do you finish off wedging a ball of clay in a way that doesn't leave creases in all these areas that you don't want them? And this is also a little bit tricky, but you're gonna continue that same motion, but you're just easing off the pressure. So no longer am I pushing down, leaving these deep heel marks from my dominant hand into the block of clay. I'm going to ease off the pressure, but keep rocking and rotating. And as I ease off that pressure, eventually the heel of the clay is going to incorporate itself back into the ball. And I'll just rock back and forth and rotate less and less each time until eventually um, what I have is more of a football shape and you can see those creases are gone. Now there might be some still on that outer edge. That's totally normal. And you can fix those just by rocking that clay right on the wearboard. And that should be enough to get rid of most of them without trapping any air. You can always do a little padding at the end too if you need, if it needs a little help. Okay, so that's what you're going for. You want a solid lump of clay which you could start another pinch pot or coil or whatever you're making. Now, a second method for wedging clay is sometimes called like the bull's horns. And that's where you're using both hands, the heels of both hands providing equal pressure. And you're not gonna rotate to the side. You're actually just pushing straight down in front of you. Some people like this because um, maybe they haven't built up the arm strength yet in their dominant arm to feel like they're confident wedging one-handed. So in this method, you're, you're rolling back with both hands, repositioning down and pushing again at 45 degree angle. And so you can see why they might call it the bull's horns is that these start to become more horn-like over time. Now this method is just as good. It's still providing a spiral in the clay and it's still forcing some of the air out in these creases here. But uh, I find it more difficult to resolve these lumps of clay um, and trying to get this to me mesh back in with the lump itself. Um, I also find it easier to trap air on the sides, but if you, if you need to use both hands, um, this will work. So you can always uh, do that. And when you're satisfied with your wedging, say you've done 50 to 100 strokes, then again, you're just gonna lighten your pressure but continue rocking that piece a little bit farther back each time until eventually you should have a solid lump. This is a little bit more like a croissant roll or something, but uh, you can seal those up, those creases, again, rolling them out on the table. Uh, it helps for wedging to have a sturdy table and a really clean, flat surface. So I'm working on drywall right now. That's not the ideal thing, but it's working okay. Um, some people will wedge on a plaster table, but that can really soak up a lot of the moisture out of your clay. So if your clay is already pretty stiff, I wouldn't recommend wedging on plaster because that's gonna soak it up. Wedging on wood is fine, um, but you don't want anything that's gonna be you know, introducing splinters or other particles 
into the clay. Another way, if, if the wedging just isn't working for you and you've got to reclaim a bunch of clay, um, you can always do that just by tapping a uh, block on the table and just doing your best to manually uh, eliminate the creases and weak spots uh, or even just tapping it together like this. So if you don't get the hang of wedging right, right away, you're not alone, don't despair, just keep trying and use what other methods are available to you to make yourself some nice consistent clay that you can start a new project from.